Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to the Economox Garage. Come on in. Well, in the previous video, um, I got the dashboard ready with most of the gauges and most of the switch gear installed. But before I even put that in the car, there's a number of items I want to install because it'll be much easier without the dash in place. And a bunch of that will be the windshield wiper mechanisms, the little nozzles for the windshield washer, and at least this one lift the dot fastener that's right up above the dashboard. Uh, these ones on either end are uh, at the top of each A pillar are accessible from underneath here so it doesn't interfere with the dash or the dash doesn't interfere with that. So I'm going to dig out my windshield wiper box and then get to work on putting all these other little bits and pieces in. So here are some of the items I'm going to be putting um, on the car before I install the dash. Mostly because they're either secured from underneath the dash or get inserted from underneath the dash. So this is the right-hand side gearbox for the windshield wiper, and this is the one that goes on the left side of the car. Uh, these would be the same for either left-hand drive or right-hand drive, because the windshield wiper motor stays in the same location. Um, I have new gaskets to replace uh, these ones here. I can see those in this bag here. Uh, I've got some cleaning up to do, and some. I'll put some clean lube on these gearboxes. I'll clean up the chrome bezels and the nuts here. And these are the little uh, washer nozzles. So I'll give those a clean, and those two go in uh, these two holes here. Now these are the new lift the dot, uh, lift the dot studs uh, that I picked up, uh, along with uh, some new washers, lock washers, and the appropriate nuts for them. And as I just, and those ones go in uh, this hole here. And this hole here and equivalent on the other side. Now, I'll probably just put the one in the middle for now because uh, this one, uh, the, because the, the dash doesn't inf interfere with these ones here. So the gearboxes mount in from underneath and to these two larger holes. And then I think I'm also going to put in the, uh, the demister vents because uh, they'll be in behind uh, the dash as well. So it'll just be easier to, to get them in from the top. So first things first, I'm going to get these all uh, cleaned up and re-lubed up, clean off the chrome, and then um, we'll get those installed in the car. One of the neat things with these lift the dot fasteners and the 10 axe ones that'll go across the backs, across the back, is there's the washer that's there is actually a little leather one that uh, protects the paint. So you can just see that there, and that'll go on all three of these studs on here, and the four that go on the back deck. Well, these have cleaned up quite nicely, and I've got some sprayed on some white lithium grease uh, into the assembly there. I'm going to get these mounted in there, and then once these are in place, and then I can uh, put the, the operating cable into place on each of these brackets. Just snug these up for now to hold them in place and then once I get the cables mounted in there um, I will tighten those up and then we'll be good to go. And you can see I have the lift the dot fastener or I have the lift the dot post uh, tightened up and securely in place. Well here we have the nozzles for the windshield washer. Now one thing I forgot that there would be a little rubber gasket on that. Now the ones that were on there are very hard. So in keeping with the Econo part of the Econo Box Garage, I'm going to make my own. Now fortunately, I have, I have this is a gasket for a later plinth that I ordered by mistake, but it's uh, the right thickness for the material. And I'm just going to use my uh, punches to create my own little gaskets. 
It turns out that my largest punch is too small. So what I've done is I've just marked on the, the size of these little gaskets. Um, I do have the correct size for the center hole. And I'll punch those and then I'll just use a pair of scissors and cut around uh, following the line that I've drawn on here. Well, they're not perfect, but they will do the trick. And it saves me a trip to the hardware store. I'm just going to give these a, a clean. Um, I'll clean up the, the nuts and the washers that go on the inside. And then I'll get these installed on the car. So here we go. We've got the nozzles all cleaned up with their my little homemade um, washer or gasket on there. I've cleaned up the, the nut and it's actually a little brass washer that goes on the inside. Uh, so I'm going to get those in. Now one thing I'm going to note, and it's going to be hard to see, that on these nozzles there's actually a tiny little hole. Uh, you can just see it there on that one. And turn that one that way. Uh, so those will obviously have to face towards the windscreen. So I'm going to put this one on the left hand side of the car and I'm going to put this one on the other side so that way then the actual outlets are as far apart as possible uh, not that it's going to make a huge difference but uh, that's what I'm going to go with they may need a bit of adjustment um, once I've got the windscreen in and test everything out but that's what we'll do for now. So now I'm going to get the washer and nut in on the other side, get those tightened up. One more item off the list. Well, I just thought I'd show you underneath the uh, the scuttle panel here. Uh, this is there's one of the washer nozzles right up here, and another one is right up here, and here's the two gearboxes for the windshield wipers. There's one here and one here and the other this here is the uh the lift the dot stud so you can see why i wanted to put those in now uh, prior to putting in the dashboard so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hook these uh the gearboxes up this is the the cable for it uh, the housing comes off the windshield wiper motor itself. Now the ends of these are flared and then they go into these little notches right here and here. And the same on this over here. Those get spaced out according to the notches there so I know it goes in the right spot. And the idea with this is this gets pulled back and forth as I demonstrated in the video where I rebuilt the the wiper motor and I'll put a link up to that above. So um, I'm just going to unscrew these two here on this one, same on this one, and we'll get the the cable installed on the on the wipers. What I've ended up doing here is actually taking the gearboxes back off the cowl and just uh, loosen them up and you can see how the ends of these uh, pipes are uh, held in place there. So now that I've got those all attached up, these are just in loose, um, I'll be able to get those up through the holes and get things oriented correctly. Now with a little bit of uh, fiddling around and experimentation, I realized that the rod or the tube for the windshield wiper motor has to go over above this little bracket here, otherwise nothing would line up. Now the way these gearboxes are designed, they do not have to be at right angles to the the uh, cowl. So that that was throwing me off for a little bit. You can see this flare here is just about lined up with the notch in the gearbox there. The same with this one here. And that'll translate over to this side. So I'll get those uh, into place again, and I'm pretty sure I have something I can put around this pipe so it doesn't rattle against either the, the, the cowl itself or with the, the bracket. And again you can see why I chose to do this before the dashboard goes in. I have the tubes inside the brackets on the gearboxes and they're just mounted loosely on both the left hand side and the right hand side 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten up, tighten them up on the outside, clamp those in position, and then I'll tighten these uh, screws up here to secure the to secure the pipe to the gearboxes. Well, I've got the wipers tightened up um, on the outside, and I've got everything tightened up underneath here, so this is all good and secure now, and uh, quite happy with how that's finally turned out. Well, here are the two demister vents. They do screw in from the top, but it's still, they'll be actually behind the dashboard. So I'm going to uh, put these into position. Uh, the pipes that go from here to the the outlet on the side of the the tunnel uh, down down there, I can put those on afterwards. So I'm going to screw these ones in. Um, I've got the screws here. There's two of them, one on each side. Uh, so one lines up on this slot, and one lines up on the slot on the other side. There is the demister installed on the left hand side and you can see the one over here on the right hand side and those are just attached by two little screws up on the top here is one there's the other one and then there's a little hose that goes from the outlet or the inlet on each of these to the rubber outlet on the side of the plenum now how these work a uh, very simple system the heater box, uh, the air flows through the heater box and into a plenum, which is underneath here. And if you want heat on the floor, you just open these little vents up. I need to give that a good clean in there. And if you want heat up on the demister, you close that up and it directs whatever air is flowing. So through this uh, outlet here, through the pipe, up into the demister, and out through the slot in the top of the cowl. You'll notice there's two little clips up in here. There's one right here and one just over there. That's just to hold the wiring harness up. So I think we're pretty much ready uh, to do the dash in, although I think uh, there's one, a couple more things I'm going to do. I'm going to mark uh, what goes through which holes on this side, and then I'm also going to install the gas pedal uh, down in here. Uh, just so I know I've got lots of room to uh, to work. Uh, the more room I've got, the better. And this, in case you're wondering, this is the uh, speedometer cable that comes up into the back of the speedometer, of course. Well, here we go with the bits and pieces for the throttle pedal. Uh, there's the two bolts that go into the floor through this bottom bracket. Uh, that will sit up somewhat like that. Uh, this little piece here fits into the hole in the back of the thing. I'll get that in when I have two hands and put some lube on that. I just cleaned this off up and gave it a coat of paint. Uh, then this part goes through the end of the linkage in, um, in, the, in the foot well and washer on one side and a new split pin to go through that little hole in the end of that piece there. So uh, let's get that. Uh, into place. Okay, you can see I've got the little bracket inserted into the back of the accelerator pedal, and this end here goes through the end of this bracket or this uh, lever here, and then here are the two holes for the the bolts. Well, there's the new gas pedal put in, and that about does it for underneath there. Uh, next up, I'm going to label all the holes in here so I can get the right wire and cable through the correct hole. And to facilitate that, there's lots of resources online, and I just got this. Uh, this is one that uh, seems quite comprehensive. So I'm just going to use this to figure out which hole is what and mark it uh, with a Sharpie, and that way it's there for the next person as well. So let's get that done. And I guess it's one step closer to getting the dashboard in. I think I've got everything done underneath the cowling and the behind the firewall done before I install the dashboard itself. I've got the holes labeled now. Um, I've roof cleaned up and painted the little brackets. There's two of them. Uh, these go into the under underside of the dash panel. So there's this one here. 
and this one here. Now it has been suggested that I install the front cockpit trim before I put the dashboard on. Each of these holes takes a, a screw with a nylox nut on the back and it'll be a lot easier to access it um, without the panel in there. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, well here's the, the trim for the front of the cockpit and as you can see there's no holes showing right now. There are a number of holes on the back side. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back the vinyl um, here around where each of these holes are so that doesn't interfere. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I believe. So what I'll, as I said, I'm going to trim uh, this vinyl back to clear the holes. And then from the other side, I will take an awl and just poke through. And then that way these screws will be able to go through that. Yeah, so I'll just make sure that punches a, a good size hole and we should be good to go. I have the vinyl trim back on the back side and there, in, there are in fact nine holes. So now I'm going to go through and poke these through. So I'll push through a little bit from the, the back just to leave a, enough to leave a mark. Then I'll use that mark to guide me to push the all through from the front side. Okay, I have the nine holes started now. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I've already got one screw inserted. Six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'll go over to the car now and we'll get these installed. Well, I have the trim loosely in place with the screws all the way through. So I'm just going to tighten those up starting from the middle, but I'm going to leave the outside ones loose, which will make sense um, in a while here, perhaps not in the next couple of videos. Because um, when I have to install the trim around the edge of the door opening on each side, it goes up underneath here into a P-clip that's held in behind with these screws. So I'll just leave those ones loose. Those won't be too bad to get access to. Um, and then I'll just go through and tighten all these other ones up. Well, there you go. We've got the cockpit trim installed, uh, except I tightened up all but the two outside nut, uh, screws. And you'll see why I'm going to do that um, in a little bit. Also installed the, the new mirror. Uh, cleaned out the threaded holes here. And uh, yeah, so that's firmly attached. So next up is to get the dashboard itself installed. Now before I put the dash in, I've decided to put, at least get started on the, what's called the draft excluder. This is the trim that goes around the edge of the door opening. Now what happens with this, a lot of times you'll see it, it'll just end here, but it ends up with a, an ugly edge and a sharp point right here. And it's supposed to end in behind here with a P-clip. So that P-clip goes in in behind here. I, um, I just have to figure out which is the correct way up, up or down to, to put it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the, the draft excluder started on this edge here and then install the dashboard. I don't have to get the draft excluder all the way around. I want to leave it to a bit later so I don't uh, damage it getting in and out of the car and doing any other work. So what I've done to help fit the P-clip on there is I've just cut back the actual rubber part uh, just enough that I can get the P-clip on the end on here. Otherwise, it'd be too too much of a squish to try and get that in there. So that will now mount up in behind and come around. And then the slot where my thumb is here, and then that just slots onto this flange that goes around the perimeter of the door opening. Well, I have to say it's been really nice to be able to work with the garage door open with the temperatures warming up. And uh, next on the agenda is getting the dashboard in. I've got the draft excluder started with the P-clips underneath at each side. So I'll, once I'm getting closer to the finish, I'll run this all the way around. But that's all I have time for for this week. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to share it with your friends. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget that little bell icon. Click on that, you'll get notified when the next videos come out. If you'd like to get a hold of me directly, you can do so by going to the email address I'll put at the bottom of the screen, and that will also be in the description below. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time.